Hi everyone. Today we'll be looking at what is known as the factored form of a quadratic function. So in your notebook, please put the subtitle, factored form of a quadratic function. In most math textbooks, you will find that the factored form of a quadratic function is written in the following manner. f of x equals a multiplied by x minus z1 multiplied by x minus z2. The big question is what do z1 and z2 represent? Well we already know what a represents. Fortunately the a does the same thing as it does in the general form and the standard form. Namely the a value causes the parabola to stretch or flip. If the A is positive, it's going to give you a happy face parabola. And if the A is negative, it's going to give you a sad face parabola. Now the two Z's together are actually quite powerful. Together, they reveal the either one or two zeros of the parabola. As usual, how do we extract more information about the parabola from the factored form so that we may draw a more or less accurate parabola? Well, let's start with the vertex first. The vertex is actually pretty easy to calculate. First, let's start with the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate is extremely easy to find if you keep in mind the symmetry of the parabola. Remember, the factored form reveals to us the two zeros. Now also remember that the two zeros are mirror images of each other. Knowing that they're mirror images of each other, this leads to the conclusion that the vertex must be right in between the two zeros halfway in between actually. And if you want to calculate the x-coordinate halfway between the two zeros, then the following formula applies. z1 plus z2 divided by 2. In other words, the average of the two zeros will reveal the x-coordinate. To calculate the y-coordinate is actually very easy. Once you've calculated the x-coordinate, it's just a simple matter of taking the x-coordinate, plugging it back into the rule, and then calculating the y-coordinate. The final piece of information that we would like to extract from the factored form is the initial value. And as with any other function, the most efficient way to calculate the initial value is to set the x value equal to 0 and solve for y. Now let's take a look at how to draw a parabola whose rule is given to you in factored form. So I would like you to put example please. Suppose I ask you to draw the following parabola. f of x is equal to 0 0.5 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. Now, before we begin, let's clearly identify the variables that we have in front of us. The value of a is equal to 0 0.5. Now be very, very careful here. The first 0, z1, occurs at x equals minus 1. Why minus 1? Because be very, very careful about the fact that in our rule, it is x subtract the 0. So with that understanding, when we go back to our rule, when you see an x plus 1, the only way to produce visually x plus 1 is if the true 0 was actually negative 1. Because x subtract negative 1 will display x plus 1. You've seen this trap in the standard form when we're dealing with the x subtract h. 
And let's finish identifying our second zero. Z2 is equal to positive 2. Let's calculate our vertex. Always start with the x coordinate. Now, the x coordinate, the vertex, is always calculated by t simply taking the average of the two zeros. So in our case, the average of two zeros will equal to minus 1 plus 2 divided by 2. And that's going to give us 0 0.5. And just a reminder of why this works. Don't forget that the two zeros are mirror images of each other. That means that the vertex is located directly in the middle of our two zeros. Next, for the y-coordinate, it's just a simple matter of taking the x-coordinate, plugging it back into our rule, and spitting out the y-coordinate. So let's do it. Our rule is 0 0.5 multiplied by, let's plug in our x-coordinate, 0 0.5 plus 1 multiplied by 0 0.5 minus 2. And that will give us a y-coordinate of negative 1.125. Therefore, our vertex is located at 0 0.5 and negative 1.125. And finally, let's calculate our initial value. As with any function, all you have to do is plug 0 into the x and calculate the y. So let's get that done. 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 plus 1 multiplied by 0 minus 2. And I believe that that will give us an initial value of minus 1. We're now ready to draw this parabola. You're going to need a grid that's about this size. Go ahead, pause the video now to prepare your grid. Alright, let's put down all the information that we have to draw this parabola. I'm going to start with the two zeros first, which are automatically revealed by the rule in factored form. So, as we have identified before, one of the zeros is located at minus 1. There it is. The other zero is located at positive 2. There it is. Next, the vertex, as we calculated, is located at 0 0.5 and negative 1.125. And I'm guessing it's going to put it about here. We'll mark it with a V. Okay, our initial value, as we calculate it, is located at negative 1. So right about there. And using the axis of symmetry, which I will identify in red, that will give us a mirror image for the initial value right about there. And that gives us nice five points to draw a pretty decent parabola. So, I'm going to estimate that it looks about like that, and the other side, like that. That's pretty good if I do say so myself. And that's all really there is to what is known as the factored form of a quadratic function. It's very useful because this form immediately reveals the two zeros and calculating the vertex and the initial value are quite easy also.